Naam, asalamu alaykum mpenzi mtazamaji hujambo mahali popote pale ulipo na kwenye ramani ya Kenya sijui kama uko maeneo gani shukran za dhati kwa kuweza kwa mkanasi asubuhi ya leo hii ni kuzacha jina langu ni Kamchemenza ikiwa ni Ijumaa ya kwanza ya mwezi mtukufu wa Ramadhan uh, na inatarajiwa kwamba misikiti hii leo itaweza kufurika furi furi e, ndugu zangu ananiambia kwamba siku kama hii ya leo Ijumaa ikiwa ni ya kwanza ndani ya mwezi mtukufu wa Ramadhani huwa ina thawabu nyingi sana 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 kwa hivyo leo watakuwa wanafika pale wengi wengine naamini kwamba watakuwa hata wanaswali nje lakini yote bora dua si ndio na mshukrani za dhati karibu ni ruhusu tu nikujuze mawili matatu kwenye taarifa zetu kabla nipishe usukani huu kwa wenzangu wanakuzacha moja kwa moja ni kwamba huduma za matibabu zimekatizwa katika baadhi ya hospitali za umma kote nchini baada ya madaktari ambao ni wanachama wa KMPDU kutimiza tisho lao la kugoma kuanzia Jumatano usiku uh, wa manane. Hii ni licha ya serikali kuhakikishia wananchi kwamba inajiza titi kuafikia suluhisho na madaktari. Alhamisi asubuhi waziri wa afya Susan Kumicha alifika mbele ya kamati ya bunge kuhusu afya katika majengo ya bunge na Kumicha alofahamisha wa bunge kuhusu hatua zilizopigwa za kulipa bili katika wizara ya afya miongoni mwanzo mpango wa matibabu alinda mama na kuwapeleka madaktari wanagenzi katika hospitali mbalimbali I have spent two hours this morning with the treasury and the, the discussion was was around the amounts that need to flow to the Ministry of Health, one of them being to NHIF. A total of 29 billion is outstanding that we have not received from uh, the exchequer. Some of that from the ministries that we have already provided service, like the National Police Service, we haven't been paid those premiums, yet services were already provided. And some for the government programs like Linda Mama, the one on the vulnerable and older persons. Actually, the argument this morning is that at least we get a minimum of two billion next week to be able to meet our commitments. Waziri huyo alifika mbele ya kamati hiyo saa chache baada ya madaktari kwanza mgomo wao wa kitaifa licha ya agizo la mahakama la kusitisha mgomo huo. Katika akaunti ya Mombasa, wagonjwa waliofika kutafuta huduma za matibabu katika hospitali ya mafunzo na matibabu maalum ya Mombasa na vituo vingine vya afya ya umma walilazimika kuelekea kwenye hospitali za kibinafsi kwa matibabu. We cannot go on as we see the dignities of dignity of our doctors is being stumbled upon. We cannot accept that. Hali kama hiyo ilishuhudiwa katika kaunti ya Migori ambako madaktari kwenye hospitali ya matibabu maalum walikosa kufika kazini. We, we are trying all we can to ensure that uh, there is uh, 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 some form of continuity of services and uh, we'll see how to uh, make sure that uh, we are able to support those who need emergency services. Mgomo baridi wa madaktari unashuhudiwa katika kaunti ya Kiambu level 5 ambako wauguzi na matibabu wamegoma kudumia wagonjwa. Na ni imani ya kila mmoja kwamba suluhu litapatikana. Manake kama wanavyosema fahali wawili wakipigana. Haya, tusonge mbele ambapo Rais William Ruto ameagiza halmashauri ya ukusanyaji ushuru KRA kukoma kutoa leseni kwa kampuni zinazoagiza vileo vya kiwango duni. Ruto amekariri kujitolea kwa serikali kutokomeza biashara ya pombe haramu ambayo imegeuza vijana humu nchini kuwa mazezeta. Weekly for catch na taarifa hiyo kutoka kaunti ya Kericho ambako Rais Ruto aliongoza maafisa wa kuu serikalini kuzindua miradi kadhaa ya maendeleo. Alhamisi asubuhi Rais William Ruto amesema vita dhidi ya pombe haramu humu nchini havitalegezwa. Na tumesema mahali popote ambapo itapatikana mtu ambaye hana leseni na anatengeneza pombe ambayo ni haramu na pombe ambayo ni sumu sio ya kwamba tutafunga tutaharibu hiyo mahali na kuharibu vibaya yote ambayo hawa watu wanatumia kuharibu vijana wetu wa taifa la Kenya watu wa Kenya wawe mstari ya mbele hakuna leseni inatolewa kwa mtu ama hawa watu wana import alcohol ama wanalete mambo ya spirit ambayo inaharibu watoto wetu katika Kenya akiongea katika kaunti ya Kericho Ruto alisema serikali haitaruhusu vijana humu nchini 
kuzama kwenye vileo na uraibu wa miadarati na tumesema kama kuna askari anaoparate ati yeye ndiye anauza pombe yeye ndiye anaendesha duka ya kuuza pombe askari aamue wewe utakuwa askari ama wewe uuze pombe au wewe kufanya yote mbili sio kama tunaelewana kama wewe ni mfanyikazi chief na wewe ni ama ni wewe ni county commissioner na ati unaoparate ba wewe uamue kama utaendesha ba toka kwa serikali enda endesha ba sasa huyu rais ameniaeleza tukiwa na professor Kibiki akiwa rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya kitu hawezi kubali ni vijana wetu wale wako na nguvu ya kufanya kazi wapotee kwa bombe hata wamama walikuwa wanalalamika vijana wameoa juzi wamekunywa bombe wanalala chini ya kitanda mama wanalala juu ya kitanda hapo hiyo bomba kweli hapo hiyo bomba Wakati huo huo Rais Ruto amewataka wa Kenya kujisajili katika zina mpya ya bima ya afya kwa jamii pindi usajili huo utakapoanza. Rais alisema kwamba kinyume na hazina ya kitaifa ya bima ya matibabu NHIF, zina mpya ya bima ya taifa kwa jamii haitatekwa na ufisadi. Kila Kenya ambaye amefikisha miaka nane atasajiliwa kama memba na tutahakikisha kwamba wale hawana uwezo wa kulipa tutawalipia kama serikali wale uwezo wao iko chini tutapunguza kutoka 500 mpaka 300 Ruto alisema serikali ya Kenya kwanza iko makini kutimiza ahadi zake huku baadhi ya ahadi hizo zikiwa tayari zimetimizwa kufikia mwisho wa mwezi ujao manyumba ambayo tutakuwa tunajenga Kenya ni manyumba elfu mia moja na zaidi ya vijana 1260 watakuwa kazini in the next three in the next two months kwa sababu ni ahadi yetu na ndio sababu hiyo mimi nimekuja hapa Kericho Ruto alizindua taasisi ya kiufundi ya Belgut kabla ya kuzindua ujenzi wa barabara ya Capsule Cell Society ya umbali wa kilomita 13 Aidha Rais alizindua kituo cha pasipoti mjini Kericho ambacho kitawapunguzia mzigo wa kazi wanaolazimika kusafiri hadi Kisumu na Nairobi kupata pasipoti hizo. Na baadhi ya wabunge kutoka eneo la North Rift wametilia shaka ufanisi wa operesheni ya usalama inayoendelea katika eneo hilo. Wabunge hao kutoka kaunti za Samburu, Pokot Magharibi na Baringo waliofika mbele ya kamati ya bunge kuhusu utawala na usalama walisema hali katika maeneo hayo imedorora kutoka kero la jadi la wizi wa mifugo hadi dhulma zinazolenga kuwafurusha watu wa bunge hao sasa wanapendekeza kuwe na uh, operation ya kijeshi ili kuzikupokonya silaha jamii uh, katika maeneo hayo Kamati ya bunge la kitaifa kuhusu utawala na usalama iliwaalika wabunge kutoka kaunti za Samburu, Pokot Magharibi na Baringo kujadili mbinu zinazohitajika kukomesha ujengili katika eneo la North Rift ili kurejesha amani. Mbunge wa Samburu Kaskazini Eli Letipila aliambia kamati hiyo kwamba takriban shule tatu zimefungwa huku wakazi wakitoroka makwao katika eneo bunge lake kufuatia uvamizi wa majangili. Uh, there was an additional NPR group which were given which which we are actually assigned to that specific area around 50 NPR uh, but I'm sorry to say the IG has sat on those names the names were approved everything was approved but the IG has, has sat on those names here Wabunge hao wameitaka serikali kutekeleza operesheni ya kuzipokonya silaha jamii zote kwenye maeneo hayo Among the names of these people who have been killed are around four NPRs and their guns have been taken by those guys so those are government guns which have been which are now in the hands of the of the of the bandits Usimi uliongwa mkono na mbunge wa Sigor Peter Lokachapong na mwenzake wa Baringo Kusini Charles Kamuren I think government must do their part so we already know some of these people <coughs> and sometimes they now threaten because if the government has not picked them they now go on threatening people when there is a raid mostly the head of that come security come is on leave or off why is it happening that time kwa mujibu wa Kamurain wa kazi kutoka takriban maeneo saba ya kilimo cha unyunyuziaji mashamba maji wameacha bila makao na kusababisha tatizo la kibin adam eneo hilo government is aware of what is going on and that is why 
they are using the word culture. It's no longer issues of culture. It's a business and it's expanding their land and it's a total business. Wabunge hao pia wamelalamika kuhusu idadi ndogo ya polisi wa Akiba walioko katika maeneo ambao hawafadhiliwi vilivyo. Wameitaka serikali kuwapeleka wanajeshi katika eneo hilo kujenga barabara na kuchimba mabawa ili kutatua migogoro kuhusu maji. And the current contention and conflict among the pastoralists is the community that is moving it is moving with the boundary pia wanataka serikali kuunga mkono juhudi za maridhiano zinazoendelea Waziri wa Usalama wa Kitaifa Kitureki Ndiki ameagiza kufungwa kwa maeneo ya uchimbaji madini ya Dabel kaunti ya Marsabit hatua hii inafuatia makabiliano yaliyozuka baina ya makundi pinzani ya wachimbaji madini na kusababisha vifo vya watu saba kulingana na Kindiki kikosi maalum cha maafisa kutoka idara ya upelelezi wa jinai kimeanza uchunguzi kuwatambua na kuwashtaki waliohusika baada ya msururu wa makabiliano baina ya makundi hasimu katika eneo la migodi la Dabel kaunti ya Marsabit iliyosababisha vifo vya watu saba wakiwemo raia wawili wa kigeni waziri wa usalama wa kitaifa kidhure kindiki ameagiza kufungwa kwa migodi hiyo kwa siku 30 ili kukomesha uhasama huo Kindiki imetangaza eneo la migodi la Dabel kuwa hatari na kwamba kundi la maafisa upelelezi wa jinai limefika katika eneo hilo kuchunguza vurugu hizo na kuwakamata waliohusika. Aidha waziri Kindiki amedokeza kuwa visa vya bakaji na dhuluma za kijinsia vimeripotiwa katika eneo hilo. Katika arifa kwenye gazeti rasmi la serikali maagizo hayo yatadumishwa wakati huo wote lakini yanaweza kubatilishwa, kusitishwa au kuongezwa na waziri wa usalama. Na nchi za eneo la maziwa makuu zimetakiwa kushirikiana katika kuafikia amani ya kudumu na maendeleo endelevu katika kanda hii wakizungumza wakati wa kutia sahihi ama saini mkataba wa maelewano kati ya kongamano la kimataifa kuhusu eneo la maziwa makuu na kongamano la makanisa barani Afrika viongozi hao walisema mizozo inayoshuhudiwa baina ya nchi za kanda hii ina madhara makubwa kwa maendeleo Makanisa ya kidini kama vile kongamano la makanisa yote ya bara Afrika sasa yanajiunga na juhudi za kongamano za kimataifa za ukanda wa maziwa makuu kupitia mkataba wa maelewano unaolenga kurejesha udhabiti na amani katika baadhi ya mataifa eneo hili Miongoni mwa wasili anayoangaziwa ni ghasia zinazoendelea mashariki mwa Jamhuri ya Kidemokrasia ya Kongo, Rwanda na pia Sudan. Right now Burundi for example has closed the borders with Rwanda because of some activities of armed groups that are suspected to be harbored in Rwanda. So it is an area we can immediately engage. Kwenye mkataba huo mabaraza hayo yalijitolea kuwapatanishi katika juhudi za maridhiano kwenye mizozo hiyo. Everybody is talking about Gaza, is talking about Ukraine. Who is talking about genocide in the Congo for the last decades? Please Africa keep your peace. No matter what because if you lose it it will take you a long time and a lot of pain and a lot of money to get it back hali kadhalika kama baraza hayo yalitia mkazo umuhimu wa kukadiria masuala ya ardhi ugawaji raslimali ili kupigajie kijuhudi za amani na uelewano miongoni mwa mataifa ya kanda hili to look into the issue of regional initiative on natural resources illicit exploitation of natural resources and their link to constant and cyclic crises in the Great Lakes region. The Great Lakes region like other regions in the continent are, is are faced with myriad of socio-political, economic, ecological and governance challenges. Haya yanawadia kukiwepo na juhudi za kuweza kuzindua mipango zaidi kama ile ya Women in Peace. Kwenye safi ya biashara ni kwamba bei ya mafuta ya petroli imepungua kufuatia kuimarika kwa thamani ya sarafu ya Kenya 
dhidi ya dola ya Marekani ambayo jana ilibadilishwa kwa shilingi 148 kilinganishwa na kiwango uh, cha awali cha shilingi 164 na senti 42 uh, kuanzia usiku wa kwa leo bei ya lita moja ya petroli itapungua kwa shilingi saba na senti 21 bei ya dizeli itapungua kwa shilingi tano na senti tisa kwa lita ili hali bei ya mafuta ta itapungua kwa shilingi nne na senti 49 kwa lita Gharama ya uagizaji mafuta ya petroli iliongezeka kwa 5.6 huku ile ya mafuta ya taa kiongezeka kwa 1.65 na ile ya dizeli ikapungua kwa 7.6 hata hivyo dhamani ya sarafu ya Kenya ilimarika dhidi ya dola ambapo kiwango cha ubadilishanaji kilishuka kutoka shilingi 164 na senti 42 hadi shilingi 148 na senti mbili hali hii ilisaidia kupunguza gharama ya uagizaji wa bidhaa za mafuta na kuishawishi halmashauri ya kudhibiti kawi humo nchini kutangaza kupunguzwa kwa bei ya bidhaa hizo kuanzia usiku wa manane leo bei ya mafuta ya petroli itapungua kwa shilingi saba na senti moja kwa lita ile ya dizeli kupungua kwa shilingi tano na senti tisa nayo bei ya lita moja mafuta kupungua kwa shilingi nne na senti tisa. kwingineko Wizara ya Leba itazindua mpango kabambe wa utoaji mafunzo ya kidijitali kwa vijana ili kuwawezesha kupata ajira katika uwanda wa kimataifa. Katibu katika idara ya ustawishaji ujuzi Dr. Wanjiru Kariuki amesema sera ya kitaifa ya mwongozo kuhusu ujuzi itazinduliwa katika miezi kadhaa ijayo ili kuimarisha ujuzi miongoni mwa vijana. This one was approved by cabinet on 13th December 2023. And uh, this particular policy is addressing the skills mismatch and is, is trying to address uh, how education and training can align their programs to the demands of the labor market. Uh, so we have quite a number of um, policy priority actions in that policy and we believe this one will address the skills mismatch. Mwishowe wahusika katika mizozo ya umiliki mali wamemizwa kwa kukumbatia mfumo mbadala wa utekelezaji haki ili kutoa fursa kwa ardhi hiyo kutumiwa kwa shughuli za kilimo. Meneja wa usimamizi wa ardhi katika shirika la chakula na kilimo Husna Mbarak anasema kesi hizo uchukua muda wa wastani wa miaka sita kuzuluhishwa hivyo kuadhiri uzalishaji chakula. When you take a case when there are disputes when there are conflicts land is locked up you cannot you know develop that land you cannot produce from that land till that dispute is resolved Michezoni ni kwamba waziri wa michezo babu na mwamba jana alizuru uwanja wa Talanta Sports City ili kukagua ujenzi unaoendelea wa uwanja huo Uwanja wa Atlanta Sports City ni mojawapo ya viwanja uh, vilivyotengwa kuandaa kombe la bara Afrika mwaka 2027 huku Kenya ikijiandaa kuwa mwenyeji wa fainali hizo pamoja na Uganda na Tanzania. Takriban majuma mawili baada ya ujenzi huo kuzinduliwa na Rais William Ruto, waziri wa michezo wa Babu na Mwamba alidokeza kuwa ameridhishwa na ujenzi unaoendelea huku akisema kuwa uwanja huo utakamilika mwezi Desemba mwaka ujao kabla ya ukaguzi na maafisa wa shirikisho la soka barani Afrika CAF. Uh, preparation of the of the grounds has been completed. Now it's very very heavy duty uh, excavation of, uh, of the foundation. Um, we have a good uh, uh, schedule we have timelines and um, looking at the pace of work going on here no doubt that uh, we are well within ababu alisisitiza kuwa mradi huo unaendelea kwa hatua ili kuhakikisha kuwa unafikia viwango vinavyostahili we have no doubt whatsoever that this project should be ready um, uh, on schedule and we have set the target of uh, December 2025 to have to have this project ready and good to go to be put to the test uh, and that will give us um, about a year and a half to test it to try it out ahead of Afcon 2027 alitokeza umuhimu wa kujenga uwanja wa michezo wa kimataifa ambao utakuwa fahari kwa Kenya na Afrika Mashariki 
uwanja wa Talanta Sports City ni moja wapo wa viwanja vilivyotengwa kuandaa kombe la bara Afrika mwaka 2027 huku Kenya ikijiandaa kwa mwenyeji wa finali hizo pamoja na Uganda na Tanzania Nayo kamati ya kitaifa ya Olimpiki humu nchini NOC imezindua mpango wa mazoezi kwa wanariadha wa mbio fupi fupi kabla ya michezo ya Olimpiki kuandaliwa mjini Paris, Ufaransa. Mpango huo unashirikisha wanariadha wa mbio za mita moja kupokezana kijiti kwa wanaume na mbio za mia nne, mita mia nne, uh, kwa wanariadha wanne kupokezana kijiti kwa wanaume na wanawake. Wanariadha hao wameanza mazoezi katika uwanja wa taifa wa Nyayo chini ya ukufunzi au uh, chini ya ukufunzi wa kocha mkuu Mwaniki Mlamba. Kinara wa Nok Paul Tergat alisistiza kujitolea kwao kuhakikisha kuwa wanasaidia wanariadha kuafikia malengo yao. Kikosi hicho kinatarajiwa kushiriki mashindano ya Asa Grand Prix kabla ya kukita kambi Miramas kwa mbio za dunia za kupokeza na kijiti. It's a great inspiration to me especially as I'm going through my life in athletics. Um, to all the all athletes who are in this camp, I can see from their faces, their reactions, they feel so happy, and it's a great thing. And I encourage the no co the committee to continue with that support. It's a pleasure for me. It's just to take the heart of 40 million with me, be confident enough, and just put my country where the name uh, to put the name of my country at the top. Naye bingo ambio za magari za Uswiri Oliver Solberg anapigiwa upatu kuibuka mshindi kwenye kitengo cha WRC2 kwenye mbio za mwaka huu za WRC Safari Kenya baada ya kumaliza miongoni mwa madereva kumi bora katika misimu miwili iliyopita. Dereva huyo mwenye umri wa miaka 22 atakuwa akiwania ubingwa wa WRC2 kwa mara ya kwanza ukumbio hizo zikiandaliwa kuanzia tarehe 28 hadi 31 mwezi huu mjini Naivasha. Soluba gataendesha gari aina ya Skuda Fabia RS Rally 2 huku wakishiriki mbio za WRC Safari Rally kwa mara ya nne. Dereva mwingine wa Skuda Fabia Goose Green Smith ataanza msimu wa mwaka 2024 kwa kushiriki mbio hizo za umbali wa kilomita 355 zenye awamu 19. Mwingereza huyo alimaliza katika nafasi ya nne kwenye mbio za WRC mwaka 2021 akiendesha gari aina ya Ford Fiesta. Nicholas Siamina pia atashiriki kwenye mbio hizo baada ya kumaliza wa nne kwenye mbio za Rallin a Monte Carlo. <tos> Dereva huyo wa Hande N Rally 2 atashiriki mbio hizo kwa mara ya kwanza mshindi wa kitengo cha WRC 2 kwa miaka miwili iliyopita Kajo Kajetanovich ataanza msimu kwa mbio hizo ambazo zinatarajiwa kuwa na ushindani mkali Charles Manster, Diego Dominguez Jr. na Daniel Swift pia wamerudishwa kushiriki mbio hizo pamoja na dereva mzoefu wa Kenya Carl Flash Tundo akiendesha gari aina ya Ford Fiesta R5 Naye mchezaji tenisi anayeorodheshwa wa pili duniani Arina Sabalenka alishindwa na Emma Navarro kwenye raundi ya nne ya mashindano ya kuwania taji ya Indian Wells. Sabalenka aliyehifadhi taji ya Australian Open mwezi Januari alishindwa kwa seti za 6-3, 3-6 na 6-2. Mchezaji anayeorodheshwa wa tatu Koko Gauff aliandikisha ushindi wa seti za 6-0 mbili dhidi ya Ellis Martens wa Ubelgiji Gauff na Navarro wanawania kuwa wanawake wa kwanza kutoka Marekani kunyakuwa taji la Indian Wells tangu Serena Williams anyakuwa ubingwa huo mwaka elfu mbili na moja. Gauff atachuana na Yuan Yu wa Uchina kwenye nusu finali huku Navarro akikabiliana na Maria Sekari wa Ugiriki. Hang in there and another unfortunate As you see they're everywhere Navarro but on that occasion too strong from Savalenka Just a bonkers point from Emma Navarro as she downs the world number 2 Arena Savalenka to reach her first ever 
WTA 1000 quarterfinal. Her career just gets better and better and better. Na mtazamaji mbili dakika zimesalia igonge saa moja juu ya lama asubuhi hii ya leo natazama kuzacha shukran za dhati kwa kuandamana nasi kutokea mwanzo taarifa hizi hadi sasa nikiwa na tamatisha langu jina ni Kamchemenza nikiwa nakutakia weekend njema lakini kwa sasa namuona tayari mwenzangu Rashid Mwamkondo kisha fika studio ni ameketi pale mwenyewe na muona lakini kukujuza tu ni kwamba ndiye atakayekuwa natuendesha kwenye kitengo chetu cha mambo bayana siku hii leo tutakuwa tunazungumzia fadhila za Ramadhan akiwa naye Sheikh Hassan Kinywa Omari anafahamishwa kwamba tayari keshafika mjengoni lakini kwa sasa mimi ni ruhusu ni kuage kumbuka ni Ijumaa ya kwanza mwezi mtukufu wa Ramadhan lakini tunawatakia waislamu wote Ramadhan njema na Sam'um Mubarak mimi ni Kamchemenza hadi Ijumaa ijayo kwa heri kwa sasa